Let us pray. Almighty God, who opens your hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing, we give you thanks that you have blessed the fields and permitted us once more to gather in the fruits of the earth. We pray that you would bless and protect the living seed of your word sown in our hearts, that in the abounding fruits of righteousness, we may always present to you an acceptable offering of thanksgiving <coughs> through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning. The first reading for Pentecost, the night, the 19, is from Deuteronomy, the 26th chapter, beginning at the first verse. When you come into the land that the Lord God, you're giving, your God, is giving you for an inheritance, and have taken possession of it and live in it. You shall take some of the first of all the fruits of the ground which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket. And you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make the, his name to dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God, that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make a response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number, and there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliated us and laid us on us hard labor. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground which you, O Lord, have given me, and you shall set it down before the Lord your God, and worship before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house, you and the Levite and the sojourner who is among you. Here ends the first reading. Please join me in responsively reading Psalm 65. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and you shall and to you shall vows be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevailed against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. By awesome deeds you answered us with righteousness, O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest sea. The one who by his strength established the mountains, being girded with might. Who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the tumult of the peoples. So that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout for joy. You visit, with, you visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. 
The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. The second reading is found in 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each, of, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. As it is written, he has distributed freely, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. By their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of your contributions for them and for all others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God upon you, thanks be to God for his inexpressible gifts. Here ends the second reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, beginning at the first verse. And again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants and treated them shamefully and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited are not worthy. Go, therefore, to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to look at the guests, he saw there was a man who had no wedding garment, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and cast him into outer darkness, in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the young and young at heart uh, to attend to the children's message today. And uh, oh, Luther Bear is so excited. He talked with his mom and dad, and they have a list of chores for him in the house, and he's going to get an allowance. It'll be the first money he's ever earned. Oh, but mom and dad also suggested not just thinking about what you want to get for yourself, but should you give some of that money back to help others at church or another ministry? Oh, and you're having a hard time thinking about that. Well, I tell you what, that reminds me of God's people in the Old Testament. So let me tell you about what happened. They had a long journey and they finally got to the land where they could farm and they could raise their fruit and their vegetables. And you can imagine how excited they were when the first food came from the fields. But do you know what they did with that very first food? They put it in a basket and gave it back to God and the congregation and gave thanks for everything God had done. And they trusted that God would continue to provide for them. Oh, you're worried you aren't going to get any more allowance if you give that first part, part of it away. Well, did your parents provide some food for you today? Uh-huh. And I see you have some clothes here. Uh-huh. Yeah, God is providing for your family. And there are people that help families that can't provide those things. And that's what some of your allowance could go back to. I know, that's a lot to think about. It's a lot for all of us to think about. But it really is about trusting God to give back what actually came from him in the first place when you think about it your very life to do those things to help your parents at home, you have that because of God. Yep, that's right. So thank you for giving us so much to think about as young people who may get their first allowance and all of us as we receive gifts, how may we share how God has blessed us? Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. And my apologies, because I've probably used this in a sermon before, but I think I'm going to handle it a little differently uh, today. Because I want to mention that the same team that brought us those words also brought us, I can't get no satisfaction. So what happened between I can't get no satisfaction, but I might get what I need? Uh, believe it or not, in reading about the background, uh, the I can't get no satisfaction uh, came during the tomorrow mind you, referred to as the tumultuous 60s, not the tumultuous 20s in which we're living right now, all right? So sometimes we forget that people have thought they've been living in the most tumultuous of times at many different junctures in history. That is not to deny the tumultuous nature of the time in which we live right now. But part of the reflection um, uh, on this song is you know, maybe it isn't about screaming for everything we want, 
but realizing that maybe the basics are taken care of. But I am here to say that God does even more. As the apostle points out in, our, uh, in his words to the congregation at Corinth, God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may what? Just get by. Just have some things. No, you may abound in every good work. Yes, Mick Jagger was just settling for something. We don't settle as people in the Lord. We trust, as I was having some conversation with Luther Bear, that God does amazing things for us. But Jagger and Richards were right. We do not get everything we want, all right? Thanks be to God that we don't get everything we want because we often want some things that aren't so good for us. We not only get what we need, but we get things that we didn't even know we should ask for and that are going to help us. I, I know that at this point, there's, there's so much going on in the world around us and Every Sunday, we are aware of a number of people in very challenging health journeys. But I am here to tell you that even those who are struggling and we're thinking, oh my goodness, I can't tell you the blessings of families gathered at their side um, for Debbie, amazing professionals who know past surgeries she's had, who are helping fine-tune her treatment. And even though Steve was a day early, that her husband was able to be by her bedside. We're, we're praying for Todd and Sandy. And there is a family that is close together and supporting one another. As Floyd was dying... His extended family was gathered around him and his wife of 70 years, Lois. That is not a given, folks, in this day and age, to have loved ones around us, to have church family when blood family can't be there, by our sides when we are struggling, whether it is physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, there are so many ways that God journeys alongside us with the presence of Christ with us. And very often in the hands and feet of his followers that come up and bless us in just unexpected ways. And yet, I'm going to go back to can't get no satisfaction here. What is that song all about? My teeth aren't white enough. I've got to have all these things that are being advertised to really be okay. Well, we aren't going to feel like we have it all because we won't, according to the advertisers and other people. So this is a call to really today, when we give thanks to God for all that comes to our table. And yes, my husband and son aren't here. That means vegetables too that they don't like that are very good for us. That it may not be everything we want, but we get what we need. But not only that, we are strengthened to share. It's not that it's we have to worry, but that we say, hey, I have been blessed that I can give. And it's not just about giving of finances to the food bank or donating food, but I am encouraging you all to do that. But it's also our time and our talents in prayer, just even sitting in prayer for our brothers and sisters who are struggling or to give thanks 
for how God has blessed them, that we have more to give, that more may come to the Lord. And in fact, this is what Paul is saying. So just quickly, so I don't neglect what this text is really about, because it is about money, people, um, that uh, the church in Corinth uh, promised to give funds to struggling Christians elsewhere. And Paul is kind of gently reminding them that they made that promise. And they're wondering, well, will we have enough for ourselves? Or, you know, what difference does it make? Other people can go ahead and support them. And here is what Paul says. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but it is also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. By their approval of this service, what will they do? They will not just say, hey, thank you, church at Corinth. They will glorify God because you follow him and confess Christ and remember everything that God has done for you. Not just, as I said to Luther Bear, our very physical breath and life that comes from God, but the fact that we are forgiven by God and that we are strengthened anew in the spirit and that we have a sure and certain hope of eternal life with our Father through Christ who conquered death by dying on the cross for us and then being raised on the third day. Thanks be to God. And so God has done all of this for us, taken care of that big stuff. And yet we're so quick to complain and not give thanks for even the smallest things that might turn our day around, that are more than what we need, but a blessing that helps us overflow to be a blessing to others. God is amazingly generous with us, but sometimes we just think about what we don't have instead of everything that we already do. This week, How can we give thanks for all that we have received in time, talent, and treasure, but even more so, recognizing that he strengthens us beyond just sufficient, that we're abounding in gifts that can be shared with others. And I know I sound like a broken record on this one, But one of those everlasting, ever-flowing gifts is the peace of Christ that surpasses our understanding. I, Because some days I am not very understanding and not feeling that peace of Christ. And I turn and try to remember, ask for forgiveness first. But if nothing else, that grace, that never-ending flowing grace and peace of God, if we can bring that into the world, into situations which are feeling tense and not very peaceful, what a blessing that could be. And that's something that we can all do in prayer, in our homes, uh, through a kind and gracious email or text or phone call, or especially as we are out and working and going about our daily lives in our neighborhoods, that, that we can be an instrument of peace for our God in the harvest of souls that more who know that we follow Christ will be like, hey, wow, what a difference Christ has made in that person's life. Maybe that's something I need to check out that I see I'm missing in my own. And so today is a day where we give thanks for the food, the fruits of the earth that God provides But we give thanks for the fruits of righteousness, the fruits of the Spirit, and pray that we continue to increase that harvest, that the Spirit increases that harvest in our lives to share the bounty with others. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.